Zero to Geek. Learning better is better. Hello Geeks! How are you doing? We're already at Chapter 6 of our book, HTML5 Graphing and Data Visualization Cookbook. If you don't have the book, it's probably not really the best video for you to watch because this is a video that's kind of like attached to the book or a way for you to peek into the book and understand what are each chapter or what is every chapter about. So let's skip the introductions. You already know how our weekly Wednesday date is a date that we talk about programming where we find a book, this time my book that I wrote, Ben Fallon, called the book we just named second ago and we basically explore the book and see what is the point of the chapter so you could then go to the chapter read it understand really what you need to get out of it when you're learning it and we'll throw in a few other bonuses and things that we think or I think that will be useful for you to understand or to think about when you complete the chapter so let's jump right in let's not waste a lot of time and jump right into our book itself so the book itself in chapter six it's a recipe book we have a couple of recipes in the book but really the biggest goal of chapter six was kind of like in one of my favorite chapters after we learned in chapter one and two how to work with canvas and three and four how to work with graphs and then five we learned how to integrate a little bit of interactiveness into our graphs in a very isolated way chapter six is our first holistic picking one of our graphs breaking it apart to pieces, rebuilding it so we could get it ready for the future. The way we do that is we're going to convert our graph into object-oriented, but let's see what the steps that are going to be involved. We're actually going to take one, one, one graph, and really our goal is to make it object-oriented and also animated. So our first element is going to be stacking graphical elements. Our stacking graphical layers enables us to use our canvas and use more than one canvas so we could then animate because there's no way to animate elements inside of a canvas our only way to do it is by layering or stacking the different things we want to animate or more accurately the easiest way to do it is that way so we'll first break apart the things that we want to animate and then move on to trying to rebuild our graph to make it in an object oriented way so it's more dynamic and easier for us to extend it and extend it as we go on in future chapters and in this chapter as well in chapter three, we start animating based on the changes that we made in recipe number one. And once we complete those animations in recipe number four, we're going to add an interactive legend followed by an even more interactive legend that is actually context aware, AKA it knows where your mouse is and gives you information regarding what's exactly underneath your mouse. So let's see it in action and really, you know, jump right in and, and see it. So first of all, we'll see again, our, if you need to find the book page, you would go to our zero to geek.com in a book section and find our book, HTML five graphics and data visualization cookbook. Now we won't be able to see all the samples because some of them are not visual and they're more programmatic such as here. We, changed almost everything it's optimized but it looks exactly the same thing as our original that we did in chapter i believe last we played with it was in chapter five so as we go through and progress we're not going to actually see every one of them but you'll see that we have a legend that is added in in chapter in in our one before our last and in our last last one oh we probably want to see that animation right so we'll click on that and we'll see that we animate the layers inside which we couldn't do that before and later on, we see how we also not only we could animate, we could also add a legend that's a little bit dynamic. And even more than that, we could add a legend that actually only tells you what about what is underneath it. So you notice that when I'm on the red, there's a yellow and a blue underneath and it shows all that information. So that's all that we have to say about our con our, our, our this this chapter in general. It's a very heavy chapter and a really, really great one. Now, if you listen to what I told you in our last video in of chapter five, when I asked you to pick a graph and just start working on it, the best exercise you could do is not continue working on this graph, but pick one of those graphs that you picked. If it's the pie chart, if it's any one of the interesting combinations that are out there and go through recipe by recipe and try to implement those changes to that specific, that specific one that you picked. All right. So that's your test. And I hope you enjoyed again, our Wednesday meeting and our tip to how could you kind of like test and see if you really understand what's going on. And again, thanks again. And I hope to see you again next Wednesday. Please subscribe to us. We love you so much. Please subscribe to us. Zero to geek. Learning better is better.